In this video, we're going to look at a handful of the newer Apple devices. It's a 2015 MacBook 12-inch Retina USB-C charging, a 13-inch MacBook Pro late 2016 touch bar model, USB-C uh, only, iPad 4th, uh, I'm sorry, iPad mini 4th generation, uh, and then an iPhone 7 Plus. of all the respective default chargers for these devices, all OEM from Apple, and I also have the 87 watt charger from the 15 inch Pro Touch Bar late 2016. I have a USB-A to lightning cable, comes with iPad and iPhone. I have a USB-C to lightning cable, which will allow us to charge the iPad with these new USB-C chargers. I also have a USB-C to USB-C that comes with the, uh, the new MacBooks. And then an interesting, so the only third party non-Apple product here, a USB-A to USB-C charger that'll allow me to charge USB-C devices off of normal USB chargers. So we'll go ahead and start here and I'm gonna reposition it. I wanted to bring up uh, this chart that I put together, uh, which I'll, uh, I'll sort of zoom in here um, on the screen and hopefully you guys can see this. And these are the charging specs I found online for the uh, latest uh, Apple adapters. So the 87 watt, 61 watt, 29 watt, all come with the new Macs, MacBooks, uh, 10 watt iPad charger, five watt iPhone charger. Uh, we know that the 87 and 61 watts are derived from about a 20.3 or 20.4 volt circuit, times it by 4.3 and you get 87 watts. 20.3 times 3.0 amps gives you 61 watts. Um, interestingly, the 29 watt charger is built to have a 14.5 volt circuit uh, at two amps, 14.5 times two is 29 watts. I could not find a published spec for 14.5 volts uh, for the, the newer MacBook uh, higher wattage charger. So it'll be interesting to see how a 29 watt charger charges this MacBook Pro and whether it'll end up stepping down to five volts. Uh, we also observed uh, that there's a, a three amp high speed charger uh, at nine volts for 27 watts in these new chargers. Uh, and then all of them have uh, legacy five watt USB support. 2.4 amps for the Mac chargers gives us 12 watts. A 2.0, 2.1 amp iPad 10 watt charger and then a one amp five watt iPhone charger. We're gonna plug all these in and see what happens uh, to these devices, see how Apple's treating us. I could not find this information anywhere online, so I just bought all the adapters that I needed here, including the uh, 87 watts. So go ahead and zoom back out here, and we'll kind of show what we're going to be working on, off of here. Um, so I have a you know kind of cheap uh, watt meter here. It tells us the watt draw when I'm using a device. We're going to go ahead and start with the MacBook Pro. We're going to grab the 87 watt uh, charger that comes with the 15 inch. Under the goal is, will the MacBook Pro 13 inch actually draw the full 87 watts from uh, the bigger charger? Because uh, that would be nice. Um, and what we can observe here is it'll take a while to ramp up. And by the way, all these computers are on full screen, Wi Fi streaming, a 4K video, and are in the like 20 to you know 40% battery usage. Um, as we can see, that this. Uh, uh, you know, watt meters taking a second here to uh, register, but uh, we're basically up to our 60-ish watts. We'll probably go a little bit over because these things tend to tend to judge a little bit higher. There's a little bit extra in there, but right there at uh, 66, uh, 65, 66, call it somewhere in there. It's not going any higher, so bummer. We can't get the 87 watts from the bigger charger going to the 13-inch. Presumably, I don't have a 15-inch. Unfortunately, can't have too many of these things. Um, where the finances get upset, but uh, we'll try the 61 watt. I don't. I don't expect that we'll see anything uh, higher or lower on this. Um, the 61 watt. This is the factory charger that came with this device that Apple recommends. The 61 watt for the 13 inch. We're going to see that it's going to uh, slowly creep up to 61 watts uh, as well. And I'll publish all my, my findings uh, in, the, in the notes below. Uh, and we'll get to the iPhone and iPad a little bit later. But here we go. We're right at 65, 66, maybe even get a little, just a little bit higher, get into 67. So actually, for whatever reason, uh, I call it more of a fluke. But 65, 66 watts is what it's measuring it as the draw. So for all intents and purposes, you can use either of these chargers with a 13 inch and, and, and you'll be fine. Um, the, you know, the 61 watt is just ever, ever so slightly smaller, but it's it's almost negligible um, how much they're about the same size. So um, 
Now the interesting one that I think a lot of people are waiting for is the 29 watt. It's small, this is very nice to travel with, much smaller. Uh, I don't know about the 14.5 volt circuit because uh, nobody has mentioned that um, the Max can, can do 14.5 volt. I assume they can because Apple's usually supportive of all their chargers. And we're seeing, um, interestingly, right at, oops, sorry about that, right at 31, 32 watts. So that's that's basically pulling the full 29 watts from this thing, which is very nice because you could very likely, you know, continue to browse the internet, do some lightweight streaming, lightweight work, and you know, charge and use your computer. And if you shut the screen down, you'll charge. Now, granted, your charge time will be about half, but uh, it might be worth the convenience of having this smaller adapter. Or if you need a second one, uh, this would absolutely work. So that's kind of cool. Um, very happy I'm getting the full watts. There was some concern on the internet, on the rumor sites, that the 29 watt would not yield the full 29 watts because uh, nobody knew whether the 14.5 volt worked. So I think hopefully this is maybe the first video that proves that. Now, interestingly, what we're going to do is use this USB A to USB C charger. Uh, we're going to plug it into the iPad charger. And we are going to go ahead and plug this into the Mac. This is the only non OEM cable, but it's, uh, it's a higher, higher rated cable. The Mac reports charging, it's not complaining. And we'll come down here and we will see that, you know, this is like a you know, 5.1 volt at 2.1 amp or something. So somewhere between 10 and 12 watts. And we're getting 13 watts, very handy because you know, in an emergency situation, if you had such a cable, you could use any cell phone charger, those five volts and the Mac will do it. Now granted at 13 watts, we're probably con gonna consume more electricity than we're putting in in the charger. But again, in an emergency, you could shut it off, put the screen off, or go into a you know, battery conservation mode and still charge this thing. Granted, it would take roughly four times longer than the built-in charger at 13 watts, but very, very nice, uh, handy thing to have. And I presume since five volts is clearly working, uh, we will get uh, five watts from the iPhone charger, and this would be a very, very slow charge, uh, borderline useless, and, and you probably couldn't use the device for extended periods of time while charging this because it would draw more, but full seven watts. So we're getting a little bit, again, a little bit more juice uh, than the stated specs. So very, very interesting. Um, we're going to switch now to the MacBook Pro, um, and I'll uh, reconfigure this uh, uh, setup real quick. Okay, we're back online with the MacBook 12 inch. Sorry, we got the MacBook Pro out of here. I'll go ahead and just verify again that we can use the five volt charger uh, on this device in an emergency. And we can actually see that, interestingly, this MacBook, no, oh, there it goes. Okay, sorry, it took a second for it to register. It's actually up to eight watts. So it is pulling everything that this little guy uh, can do. It's uh, There's updates available, sorry about that. Sierra just posted updates yesterday that actually, interestingly, um, take away the how much time I have left because Apple said that was inaccurate. So um, anyways, seven, eight watts pulled from there. Uh, we'll skip the iPad one because we know that's gonna work. The key here is to well, get rid of this cable too because I'm not gonna do that uh, five volt charging. We'll put the 29 watt that came with it in and uh, we will confirm that we get the full 29 watts. It's gonna be much happier running on this than the five watt that we just did. So we should see, you know, it's just 29 to 33 is kind of what we saw the uh, bigger brother MacBook Pro pulling. And right there again, yeah, 32, 33 watts. So obviously we would expect this to be the high efficiency charger, the one that Apple recommends for this product, but we also need to test, you know, what happens if you, look, we'll try the 61 watt, uh, 61 and 81 for all intents and purposes are probably gonna operate the same at this point. We'll verify both really quickly, but let's say you have the bigger charger. Is there any value? Probably not. I don't think there's a 20 volts support for the MacBook, but maybe we'll be surprised. Um, but can we get more charging to a 12 inch MacBook Retina using one of the bigger brother chargers and it doesn't look like it. It looks like we're right there at 32 to 33. Although I do give Apple credit for making all these different specs work. Uh, so you can have a, you know, a plethora of these chargers and you're good. Uh, I don't have any expectation that this is gonna work any differently, but we'll try the 87 watt just to rule out that there's not some secret magic. Um, try and operate the glare angle here. 
and we're going to arrive, I believe, at the same conclusion. Um, and I've tested this before, so I'm, I'm really interested. I, I couldn't find any of this information online, and it drove me nuts. I have a 29-watt charger. I had the 61. I needed one more. I ended up buying the 87 just so I could mostly do this test and, and hopefully get a little bit more juice. Uh, it doesn't look like that's the case, but the negligible price difference. Okay, so again, actually it looks like the 61 watt and the 29 watt charge a little bit higher than the 87 watt, but I think that's in the, you know, kind of the, the test variability difference. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the, I'm gonna put this computer aside. We'll move on and look at an iPad 7. Uh, interestingly, we can verify a couple things here. We'll start with the charger that comes with the uh, iPhone 7, the, the 5 watt. Uh, we'll use the charger that comes with the iPhone 7, which is a USB-A to lightning. And we will plug this in. And we will verify that we're getting almost 7 watts. No surprise there. Now the question is, change it to the iPad charger. Do, do we really get a benefit? Everybody, everybody on the internet is always saying, oh, use an iPad charger, it'll be faster, you know, and look at that, it gets the full 12 watts. So that is definitely a myth that's been proven to be true. Uh, of course, no surprise, that one's been around for a while, but there you go, using an iPad charger and an iPhone will yield 50% or more power, uh, at least 50%. Um, so now the big question, if I take this out, uh, and I'm actually going to test a couple things here. I purchased the Apple USB-C. I know it's kind of hard to see. To Lightning, uh, and I'm going to plug the Lightning side in, and I'm going to try the 29 watt charger and see can we get more than 12 watts into an iPhone. It doesn't look like it. So this is probably using the full 2.4 amps or, or thereabout 2.4 amps at 5 volts. There's no support for a higher uh, voltage on at least the 29 watt. Now we do know that, or at least I read, that the 61 and 87 watt have a nine volt circuit. I'm sure if the iPad will take that or we'll down step to five volts. So this is a 61 watt and we'll see that, yeah, we're not gonna get to that you know, 27 watt figure or anything like that. So there you go. That pretty much shows that at least with the Apple chargers and the way that they're configured intelligently, the iPhone can only draw about as much as an iPad charger can issue around 12 watts or so. Um, and uh, I think we'll skip the 87 watt charger. There's nothing, well, we'll just, just rule it out. Again, no, nothing secret going on here. Um, yeah, right there at 12 watts. Okay, let's try the iPad. I'm actually going to leave the We'll start from the high side just to save a little time on the video. I'm going to plug the iPad in. It's a 59% battery right now. Plug it in to the, I'll just set it on the ground here. Plug it into the 87 watt and again we get uh, 12 watts so no value in using the USB-C to lightning. I'm going to do one more test which is to charge this off of the MacBook that's plugged in. So what I'm going to do is bring the MacBook Pro over something somebody might do, including myself, which is why I bought this cable precisely, is I'm going to charge my, well, we won't be able to see through the power meter, unfortunately, but, you know, the idea was maybe if I was using the 87 watt and drawing through two USB-C ports, uh, maybe we would see a little bit more, and I don't know if you guys saw what I did there, but, um, I don't think that that's going to pull any of the 61 watts. We're just going to share the power um, going from the MacBook Pro into the iPad. Um, there's good, I don't have a measurement device, unfortunately, that can sit in line on that USB-C. But again, we're we're getting at 65, 66 watts uh, here, so there's no like power pass through that could absorb you know more more power. Not that that type of technology really exists in any standardized format. So what I'll do uh, real quick is we'll we'll go ahead and and come back here to uh, the, the iPad that concludes uh, that. And we'll, we'll look real quick at the um, built-in 10 watt charger, which I, I presume we're gonna get the full, um, the full power draw on. Yeah, right there at about 13, 13 watts and um, iPad's happy. When we plug the five watt 
in. Um, you know, maybe we'll see that seven to eight watts. Um, you know, iPad minis don't aren't offended like some of the bigger iPads about using the smaller uh, wattage, but um, that really concludes the results. So um, again, we'll cover uh, a little bit of a summary here. The beauty of the USB iPad and iPhone um, chargers, both at five watt and at uh, 10 to 12 watts, is they will charge every device here if you have the right cables. And then the USB-C uh, family here, which I'll stack up nicely here for you, will also charge every device under the sun. And pretty much every device will charge with every single one of these chargers at its full stated rate. The exception being the iPhone. The iPhone will charge faster on a bigger charger, any of the bigger chargers. So you could do yourself, if you wanted to charge a little faster, getting a, a, another slightly better Apple charger and use it on your iPhone and you'll go from, they'll roughly increase your, your charging capacity by about 50%. Uh, everything else runs regardless of how you intermix things at full capacity, which is very, very uh, nice. So you can keep these things stashed around. I hope you guys found this video informative.